Hello everyone, welcome to my PS5 expandable SSD guide and in this video I'm going to go through everything you need to know about the PS5 expandable SSD. And we're going to start with what all of that terminology means. So what does PCIe Gen 4 and M.2 and 2280 and all of those things mean so that you get a bit of an understanding of uh, what you're actually buying. And then we're going to talk about what SSD you want to buy and of course how you're going to install it. Okay, so let's get going. So the resources that I used for this video was the Sony support page for expandable SSD installation and the Eurogamer guide for best SSDs for PS5. I don't think you actually need any more information than this because it's all listed there. But uh, if you want more information, of course, there are other YouTube videos that you can go and look at. Now, there's existing internal PS5 storage of about 825 gigabytes, 667 gigabytes is usable. And so if you start to feel like you're using up all that storage space and you can't be bothered deleting and moving things around, you can always add more storage space by using PC SSDs. Now, it's only available for beta users or uh, or the firmware which is in beta access at the moment. So uh, if you don't actually have access to that, you can't actually do this. So later on, when it finally becomes available to everyone, you will be able to do this. But just be aware that it's only available for people with beta access to this firmware right now. So anyways, uh, you can install these, these SSDs and you can add more storage space to your PS5 and the good thing is that they actually start from about 250 gigabytes and up and you can buy according to your budget. So this is basically uh, what you have to do. So you're going to have to remove that bottom panel from your PS5. It's very easy to do. There are no screws involved and all it is is like you just lift the cover off and then you're going to remove the aluminium cover off which is not shown here and then you're going to insert this SSD and then you're going to screw that down and then you're going to replace all of those covers back on. And that's really all you have to do. It's a very simple process. It'll only take about five minutes to 10 minutes tops. All right, let's talk about all of that terminology first. So you're going to be looking for a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe M.2 2280 SSD. So what does that all mean? So let's start with PCIe. That stands for Peripheral Connect Interface Express. But essentially all that really means is expansion slots on a PC motherboard. So typically on a PC, if you wanted to add stuff to your PC, you would do so by putting uh, or inserting cards into these expansion slots. These might be things like graphics cards or audio cards or capture cards. And uh, the storage also uses PCIe slots. So, um, but they are different types. So the NVMe will actually be an M.2 slot, which we'll get to in a second. But uh, that's where the PCIe term comes from. Gen 4 just means fourth generation. So we've had Gen 1 and Gen 2 and Gen 3. And typically that just means that we're getting faster transfer speeds now. NVMe is a format for these SSDs. So as you can see there, the NVMe is a different size to your SATA SSDs. So your NVMe looks like a bubblegum stick type of uh, SSD. <laughs> And your SATA SSD is a different format and a different size and it even has a different connection as well. So those SATA SSDs won't actually fit into that PS5 expandable SSD slot. So you don't want to buy that SATA SSD. Plus they're a lot slower anyway. So the one that you want to use is the NVMe because that's the one that's actually going to fit. M.2 is a type of slot. So as you can see there on your motherboard, on a PC motherboard, uh, normally, you'll insert that parallel to your motherboard. If you insert a graphics card into that PCIe 16 slot, then that's going to be perpendicular to your motherboard. So that's all that really means. Uh, the M.2 is just a type of slot. Now, the M also stands for the M key edge connector. And as you can see, that's going to be five pins wide. You don't really need to know about that because when you buy the M.2, you're just going to insert that SSD into your uh, PS5. But it's also good to know uh, what the M stands for. And this also means that you can't really insert this upside down as well because it will only go in one way. Now 2280 is actually the size of the SSD and 2280 is pretty much the most common format right now for P5 
people uh, on PCs. There are other sizes as you can see there and you can insert those into your PC as well. But uh, the ones that have been recommended in that Eurogamer guide are all 2280. Now SSD is just solid state disk so they just differ from old hard disk drives where they were actually spinning a disk platter around whereas now your SSD is actually flash memory and you've seen that on things like uh, micro SD cards or uh, iPhones for example and so this is a very similar thing. So which SSD are you going to buy? Well this is the easiest section of the video. You're going to just buy whatever's listed here on that Eurogamer PS5 SSD guide. They went through and looked at all of the SSDs on the market and these are the ones that work with the PS5. Now the first four actually come with a heatsink and Sony insists that you do use a heatsink on it. It's not just the recommendation. They uh, they said in their installation guide you need to use a heatsink and if you buy one of the first four they'll have a heatsink version available or have a heatsink attached on them and you're just going to be able to install insert that and it's going to work. Now the next six actually require a heatsink or you to buy a heatsink separately or they require a shorter heatsink. So the one that actually comes with it is actually a little bit too tall. You're going to have to remove that and sometimes they don't even come with it attached anyway so you don't even have to worry about putting that on. You're just going to put on your own heatsink and that way it's going to fit into that PS5 SSD slot. So if you click through those links you'll come to some Amazon pages and I'm just going to put these up here just so you have a bit more familiarity with what you're looking for. Okay let's talk a little bit about SSD speed. So it's been recommended to use 7 gigabytes per second and if you see these pages it says 7300 megabytes per second and 7000 megabytes per second respectively and 1000 megabytes of course equals 1 gigabytes. Now the PS5 internal SSD actually runs at 5.5 gigabytes per second but in the Mark Cerny PS5 hardware reveal, Mark Cerny is the architect of the PS5, he suggested using something a little bit stronger and that was because uh, on the PS5 SSD there's a custom flash controller on there that's stronger than these third-party SSDs flash controller. So he said to compensate for that a little bit, get something that is a little bit faster, so get the 7 gigabytes per second. Alright, let's talk about the heatsink and in Sony's SSD installation guide they actually require you to have a heatsink on your SSD. And that's because it gets really hot, so if we look at this Tom's Hardware WD Black SN850 review, it says that the SSD gets up to 92 degrees. Now this is without the heatsink and it's on an open test bench. So inside your PS5 uh, if you have your cover on it's going to be actually a little bit warmer. Um, so if you were to not to have a heatsink that would actually get really hot and if you were to go over 100 degrees that might actually uh, reduce the life of that SSD. So you'd want to keep things uh, as cool as you can definitely under 100 degrees. Try and keep it under 90 degrees if you can. The only way you're going to do that is if you have a heatsink on it. So the Eurogamer PS5 SSD guide has some recommendations for compatible heatsinks. Essentially compatible just means that it's um, going to fit inside that slot and uh, those recommendations look uh, like they're pretty uh, inexpensive especially compared to the SSD itself where the SSD is about like $100 to $200 and these heat sinks are $5 to $10 each. So uh, go and have a look at those SSDs. They're pretty easy to install. They usually have some double-sided tape on them and all you're going to do is just put that on top of your SSD and that's really all you're going to have to do. So let's talk about the installation steps for this SSD and we already talked about it before but you're going to need that firmware which is in beta access at the moment. If you don't have that you're going to have to wait until that final version of that firmware comes out. Now the next thing you have to do is turn off your PS5, make sure you touch a metal grounded object to get any uh, static electricity out of your body. You're going to have to turn it upside down and you're going to have to remove that bottom panel off. Now I'm just going to read this because uh, just to make sure that everything is clear. It says here, instruction 5, place your palms near the top corners and grip the edge of the cover. Gently pull the cover up and towards yourself you may hear a click. So you're just going to pull that cover off and it's going to be, it should be pretty easy to do. Instruction 6 says to remove the screw from the expansion slot cover A and then remove the cover so it's a little aluminium cover there. 
and then you're going to remove the screw B and spacer C and then adjust the spacer to the size of your M2 SSD. Hold the edge of your M2 SSD, align it with the notch on the expansion connector and then starting from diagonally upward, firmly insert it all the way in. So you're just going to insert that SSD in, make sure you start diagonally upward and then you're going to push that down, uh, just push it down slowly. If there's too much give, then you probably inserted it wrong. So just do it slowly. And then you, after it's in, then you can screw that down with a screwdriver. You're going to attach the expansion slot cover back, and then you're going to put the main bottom panel back on. And that's all you have to do. Now I've got a quick video, and this is from Tom Warren from The Verge and he basically shows you what the process looks like. It's not the best video, but uh, it should give you some idea of just how quick it is. This is a 40 second video. So I'm guessing most people will be able to do this in five minutes tops. So you're just gonna remove that aluminum cover. You have different sizes for your SSDs, and you're going to take that screw out. You're gonna put the SSD in. Now he doesn't actually insert it, in this video, but I think you guys will know what that should uh, look like. And that's really all you're going to have to do. You're going to put that cover back and that's all there is to it. So I hope you found this SSD guide helpful. If you have any questions whatsoever, make sure to comment down below and I'll try and get to your question. But that's going to be it for this video. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.